Hi, this is Kiana Miner. Welcome to the Crazy Courage webinar, where we are busting success myths and learning to live more courageously. Today on the call, we have with us Michelle Blood. Michelle is a successful and multi-talented lady. I'm so excited to have her here. She um, has trained and motivated major companies worldwide, including Nestle, Prudential, Shell Oil, and Motorola. Her public success events have been held in over 16 countries around the world. Michelle, after many years of meditation, was transformed spiritually and now teaches others how to live a mystical life, which is true, the true heart of success. Thank you so much, Michelle, for being here. Thank you, Kiana. Wonderful to be here with you. <laughs> also on the phone. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So, Michelle, you know, I know I read your bio and, you know, kind of pulled out some key points from there to share with the group. But if you could just introduce yourself to the group, tell us a little bit more about you. Uh, in what respect? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what type of work do you do? Oh, you don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, I do know. I just I just want to make sure that the participants are more familiar. Oh, yeah. With okay. Yeah. Well, now my main thing is the Mystical Success Club which has okay. got people from over 26 countries around the world. And we teach the way to success in, in your spiritual life and in the material world, which all becomes one then, is through meditation and intention and raising your vibration to that divine vibration. And I also have positive music. A lot of it I've written with Bob Proctor, who I wrote a book with. And, you know, it's in doing, you know, the seminars, the mystical events, you know, continue to do them live all over the world and just do light transmissions for people when I, you know, when they're requested and okay. just love what I do. I've, you know, when, okay. you, when you have found exactly what it is you're supposed to do and mm -hmm. you're living, on, you know, in that. <laughs> okay. okay. Life becomes yeah, that sounds beautiful. awesome. Mm-hmm. I um, actually was introduced to your work when I was, years ago, I was um, a massage therapist, and I was building my massage practice, and so there were songs, I started downloading your music, and there were songs like, I love my customer, and... Oh, I remember you now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. I that email now. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, and I love that. I mean, it, it was so helpful, because the music was fun, and it was upbeat, and it was just a great way to kind of get those affirmations in. And, and to kind of and to start to change my mindset around business um, business ideas. So. Yeah, it really does. Music affects the left and the right hemisphere of the brain and goes straight into the subconscious mind. So if you're putting positive reinforcement in there in a happy way, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, it's very, very powerful. Awesome. How did you start creating the music? Well, I was a singer-songwriter in Australia, and I was on my way home from a gig, and the driver after, you know, because Australia is huge, and you have to drive like 10 hours, 12 hours to each gig, and <laughs> he fell mm -hmm. asleep at the wheel, and so I was in a horrific car accident, and I sort of had wow. a um, mystical experience, and I decided I, well, first of all, I started writing these affirmation songs for myself for my own okay. healing. I had no intention of sort of bringing it out to the world. Wow. But okay. um, they sort of did a TV special on me and so people started finding out about it, Bob Proctor and all of these different people who would come to Australia and they'd ask me to come and sing these affirmation songs. And then Bob Proctor said to me, you know, I've been teaching about positive reinforcement and affirmations my entire life. And he said, this is the fastest way I've ever seen to get it into the subconscious mind. And then Brian Tracy said, this is just incredible. And so a lot of them started working with me, using my music. And then I actually started writing songs with Bob Proctor, <laughs> many songs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, I then I just started on a journey around the world, left my band <laughs> and, wow. um, and just did these positive positive songs is positive music okay that's amazing what a great story and i feel it sounds that, like you know because sorry, you know, i i was told i probably never walk again properly and i was one of my operations was 17 and a half hours long and you know i was in a very negative state of mind and you know these affirmations that i started to put because i was told you know use healing affirmations and i would say i am healed but you know the doctors right. are saying you're not and giving you all the negativity and your horrific pain so that it would never go into the subconscious because it immediately spat it out and rejected it and said, 
you're not healed, you don't love yourself, what are you right. saying? <laughs> <laughs> right. And then it, it just came to me, you know, I'm, I'm a musician, I'm a songwriter, you can't get songs out of your head. Maybe mm-hmm. if I put them to music and that's how it started. Oh, I love that. That's a great story. So you, do you think you experienced a miracle because of your music? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the doctor said, you know, and they don't like to say things like that, that it was, you know, the miracle girl. <laughs> oh wow that's awesome yeah yeah I love that you said you know with the songs you can't get them out of your head because that's so true of music and what a great positive effect of affirmation music you know like I know there are lots of times I couldn't get like I love my customers I couldn't get that out of my head and that was just such a great <laughs> such a great side effect of the music <laughs> Yeah. Um, it sounds like it took a lot of courage to do what you did, you know, making up the music while you're in the hospital and leaving your band to pursue it for full time. Could you tell me about one of your most courageous moments in that process? Well, I think the most courageous moment really was, you know, I was told that, you know, I had to go to these doctors and I would get like incredible insurance for my car accident if I demonstrated that I was in a really bad way. And I just said to myself, you know, this is not the truth for me. I am healed now. I would rather not have all that money and be healed. I'm not going to put any negation. And so I just made a decision. I'm not going to uh, do any of that, say any of that. I don't care about the money. And two months after that decision, the laws in Australia changed. And for a car accident of my type, Mm -hmm. um, it just said, you know, she doesn't have to go to court or anything. She just gets the money. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow, wow. So it was—I I mean, it was extremely challenging. But I, I just, you know, you can't wear high heels, can you? Can't do this. Everything they said that I couldn't do, I said, look, I've been through the worst pain that, that anyone can experience. You know, I'm right. not going to—I'm not going to say no anymore. I'm going to do it, even if I'm scared. I'm just going to walk through the fear and just come out the other end. And okay. every time I did that. I would raise my consciousness, I'd be a different person, I'd feel such divine love and just peace and faith. So I feel Mm -hmm. that every time somebody walks through that door over, like Bob Proctor calls it, like the terror barrier, once you get over that terror barrier, when the mind is like been telling you, go this way, no, don't do that, it's risky, do this, no, don't do that, what will happen if you don't do this? And if you finally okay. just say, no, shut up, I'm not listening, <laughs> you know, I'm right. just going to do this. The decision is made. Nothing's going to stop it. I'm, I'm making this decision. My family said I was crazy. You know, everyone was like, oh, she's insane. And then, you know, why, why would you knock back all that money? You've genuinely been terribly hurt, you know, been through a huge amount of pain. And, um, and I just said, no, I, I, you know, I'm not going to do that because that's affirming, again, the mind. I realize how powerful the mind is when you give mm-hmm. it an order, a, a command, you know, that you're mm-hmm. healed. It will, anything can happen. This world is just a dream. You can change that dream. And so mm-hmm. to then put negative connotations to the healing was just not going to happen. I just said, no, I won't okay. listen to any of you. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. And I think that's so funny because that's why I've called the, the interview series crazy courage because a lot of times <laughs> people do, they do think you're crazy. <laughs> that, that, so. That's more true than you'll ever realize. My band in Australia was at that point where we were getting like contract record contract offers and you know, I'd already had record contract office, but this was like a new band I put together after my car accident, and they were fantastic. Okay. And it was just like I had this opportunity to go and work with Louise Hay and all of these different people. Oh, people my were goodness. hearing it, and Deepak Chopper right. and everyone had been hearing about my affirmation songs. So I gave mm-hmm. them six months' notice, and I said, no, I'm not going to do it. And they said, okay. this is what you've been waiting for your entire life. And I said, I, I can't do it with these type of songs. I don't want to feel the consciousness of people that listen. What if they're really successful and they hit number one? You know, uh, the songs aren't positive. And I just Um, was like gung-ho about not feeling anyone, realizing now how positive music and negative music can really influence people so quickly. People can't get a jingle out of their head, you know. (laughs) It's so true, yeah. It's definitely true. Yeah, so I gave them six months' notice and we worked hard for six months and they're all doing great now in in their respective worlds of music, so it's all good. 
But that, okay. was, that was really hard because I got pressure from, you know, the the, the people in the band had girlfriends and wives and kids. And <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah. So, I, but I did it. I just I left Australia and I started on a new course, traveling the world on my own, everywhere I went on my own, and uh, okay. And it was just, you know, really, really insanely crazy to the outside world, to family, to friends, what I was doing, mm-hmm. starting from scratch okay. on my own. And it, it worked out okay. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it did. <laughs> it seems like it did. Did it become easier to listen to your intuition after making that jump? Like as you, oh, yeah. you know, were traveling? Yeah, I still went through some, you know, scary sort of situations for sure, you know, in different countries mm-hmm. when you're on your own. and. I, I ended up just meeting the right divine people at the right divine time and everything always worked out. But it doesn't okay. mean that I still didn't have fears come up. But mm. I just had learnt. I just learnt from my past experience. No, you have to walk through that fear. Just cross that terror barrier and you'll be in the land of you know, creativity and great people. Don't allow yourself to be on that vibration of fear for too long. You, you're on it, mm. accept it, but walk through it by doing it, by taking action. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I bet that action was key. Yeah, you take action. You don't just mm-hmm. sit there. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Now, it's apparent that affirmations are an, a really important tool for you as far as building courage. What other things do you do to build courage and kind of maintain that inner balance so that you can hear your intuition? Well, what happened to me was because my I've been doing I was doing things that were very unusual in the world, mm-hmm. you know, on your own, not caring mm-hmm. about whether people knew about them or not, having these amazing experiences. I started on a search of spirituality, very, very deep search, went all over the world looking for a spiritual teacher. And I worked with beautiful spiritual people, you know, the highest, uh, well, self-improvement people in the world, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. And I loved mm-hmm. them very much, but I couldn't, you know, I had this love for the divine. I wanted to find out where the divine was. It Was it in me? Could I find it through meditation? What can I do? And even though I met all these wonderful people, I, I knew that they didn't know God yet. And so eventually it took me to America where I met an enlightened teacher who was actually American. And okay. she, I was very blessed. She accepted me as a student. I saw light coming out of her hands. I was just like, wow. It, it's just like, this is what I've been waiting for. This is love. This is the divine. And I started meditating and doing all of the things that she suggested. And eventually my kundalini uh, rose <laughs> well and truly. Okay. And I woke up, as they say. And, um, mm-hmm. and then the fear is gone. The beautiful thing about being free is you no longer have fear. Fear is something that is attached to human attention, to the past, to the future, to being afraid about the future. When you don't have attachment to those things... And you're, you've gone through the light so many times in deep meditation, you don't ever again have fear. The fear is uh-huh. gone. You live without fear for the rest of your life. You are now a changed being. You're still a human uh-huh. being. You're not mm-hmm. God. You're not a saint. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you're a person who now has light in them and you don't have fear. And then you just, all you want to do is help others release that fear, release that so uh-huh. that they can then live a life that is extremely exciting and exhilarating and it's like peace and joy all at the same time you're not ever overexcited you're never depressed you've just got this peace and joy and life becomes something that is extremely beautiful you know it's it's just so beautiful and you just feel love for every creature every being and you're protected and you know it and so the fear goes But it's very, very good to go through those experiences of fear and rise above them by taking action, by doing it scared, because that helps you. Every time you do something like that, it takes you to a new level of oscillation of, you know, it's courage isn't doing things, you know, when you're not afraid. Courage is doing Mm -hmm. things when you are afraid and doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. I heard this amazing story about, you know, this young man in um, Iraq who just very, very young man, uh, young soldier, and there was a a grenade that went down into their bunker, and he just immediately threw his body on the grenade. There was no thought of, you know, oh, wow, let's just all run for it. He just immediately, now that's what I call courage. 
that was wow. like doing something without even thinking of self, just saving mm-hmm. saving the lives. I think I think it was like eight other people, you know. So okay. you know, he got the all the purple stars and all the things that you get, but uh, he doesn't care now. He's he's in the light, you know. <laughs> right, right. But, but to me, you know, it's like when I hear stories like that, that's what really touches my heart because that's someone sacrificing for others. That to me is true courage. That is true courage. I love that story. And it sounds like it sounds like from that story that courage can bring us into the present moment, can cause us to show up fully in the present moment is that what you've experienced yeah I I think when people do things that are difficult you know because Mm -hmm. courage is different for every person somebody might be extremely afraid of one thing that somebody else is not afraid of and the person is not afraid of it like like what are you scared for just do it and that person who's scared is like what are you talking about I, I can't help my fear but they sort of get through it anyway and so I love I love people that don't judge where people are at with their level mm-hmm. of courage or, you know, you do one little thing that you've never done before that scared you a little bit, that's courageous. Mm-hmm. Okay. You don't have to tell anybody about it. You've done it for you so that you can feel fulfilled at the end of the day. You did that thing. And for people that do something for someone else with never, ever asking anything in return, you know, mm-hmm. they do something beautiful and they don't go home and tell everybody about it. They go into the closet, you know. They've, they've prayed right. in the closet. They're already mm-hmm. fulfilled because they've given, whether it's just a $5 to a homeless person or gone and spoken at a hosp- hospice where people are just about to leave the body, you know, or whatever they've just done when they saw someone is down, even if it's a checkout girl at the checkout counter, and they've just talked to her and said, given a nice, sincere compliment. You know, thinking of other people, doing things that sacrifice that aren't sacrificed to that person anymore. They just do it because that's who they be- have become. That, okay. That's what I think is helps people become courageous as well when they stop. People become extremely fearful when they're thinking about themselves too much. What's going to happen to me? Mm. What's the future? If they can stop okay. thinking of themselves and think of the big picture, what would happen if I didn't do this thing? Mm-hmm. You would still be in the same place you are now. Well, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like that uh, lady who wanted to become a doctor and she was 40 and she was married. And she married when she was very young. She always wanted to become a doctor. And she said to her husband, okay, the kids have gone off to college. I'm going to go to medical school. And he said, you'll be like 55 by the time you get out, 60 if, for all the right. different studies you want to do. And mm-hmm. she said, well, I'd still be 60. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I'm going to be 60 anyway. Yeah. Right. That's an awesome story. I love that. Yeah. So why not be 60 and be living this dream that I have? You're a a neurologist. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Um, So you mentioned that we become fearful when we think about ourselves. We're thinking about ourselves too much. What else keeps us stuck in fear? Well, the fear of the unknown, isn't it? You know, if, if somebody hasn't done a thing before, they are afraid. It's they're, they're afraid of. Hurt. Well, it it depends on if it's physical fear. If it's physical fear, that's understandable. Somebody who's mm-hmm. afraid of heights doesn't want to jump out of a plane. That would be stupid. You don't want to be going and doing something that's <laughs> mm-hmm. not what you really mm-hmm. want to do. Uh, you know, it's silly to do something that you're afraid of because other people are pushing you to do it. Okay. What true courage will really help you rise up in oscillation is when you do something that you're personally afraid of. It, mm-hmm. it might be writing a book, starting a website, leaving a, a full-time position to work for yourself, you know, um, leaving that man who doesn't make you happy and deciding to go give it a go on your own with the kids. You know, okay. <laughs> there okay. are many, many times ways of courage. It's, it's It just depends. But I think if people do things that they're afraid of doing for other people's uh, love or acceptance, then that's the wrong sort of thing to go for. Do Mm -hmm. things that you feel within your heart that other people probably don't think you should go for it. There was a lady I met in New Zealand and she Mm -hmm. was an accountant and she was extremely big. There was a big audience. I don't know, must be five, six hundred people. And I said, you know, is there anyone out there who really wants to do something but they're so afraid but they really hate what they're doing now and she put her hand up and 
you know, everyone really listened. They were very loving. And she's a very big lady. And I said, look, I tell you what, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but, you know, she wanted to become a piano player. And she'd never played piano in her life, but she'd always had these dreams that she could do it. And, mm-hmm. and, and so she ended up becoming an accountant because that's what all the rest of her family did. She hated it. She could do okay. it, but she didn't like it. Mm-hmm. And I said to her, okay, so what I want you to do for two years, if you can do this, don't leave your job, your day job, but mm-hmm. throw out your television set. Never, ever, ever again order food delivery. Get up some exercise regimen. And all those mm-hmm. hours that you would sit and eat food or be miserable at home or watch television, I said, from now on, you're going to play piano when you do that. You'll go to piano lessons. You'll mm-hmm. have a piano. Anyway, it only took her a year and a half. She lost, I think it was, she released 60 pounds. She ended up getting a job in the lobby she ended up moving to Australia in the lobby of the Regent Hotel, which is now the Four Seasons in Sydney Harbour. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. But she okay. really did have a gift. It wasn't just wishful thinking. Right, right. Yeah. Because I said to her, if after two months you, you love it, but you find it extremely difficult, you keep going. If after two months you hate it and it's difficult, well, you stop. Because then it was just wishful thinking. Okay, okay. Do you think a lot of the times that we have sort of those dreams, like I think that's amazing that she never played the piano or never explored music, but she kept kind of feeling like, okay, this is something that that is in me. This is something that I'm dreaming about or that I'm thinking about. Do you think that, um, you know, you talked about the divine and deepening your relationship with the divine. Do you think that the divine puts dreams like that in all of us? Well, it's past life experience. Obviously, she'd been a musician in a past life. Okay. And she got, she got okay. stuck in a box. You know, of course, mm-hmm. it's the divine in everyone who brings out the creativity. Okay. But no one is creative without the divine. Everything okay. that's ever been created is through the divine. <laughs> okay. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> but, but it's definitely a past life thing. And you can, you know, I could, didn't know that back then. <laughs> I didn't know right, that stuff. Right, right. That was a bit woo-woo for me back then. But I just... I just knew that there was something I could just feel. I always had an intuition, intuition about people, and I always wanted people to feel happy, to feel, okay. you know, happy. <laughs> mm-hmm, right, right. <laughs> Which is, you know, revolutionary, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it seems like it should be natural that we should be in this happy state. Like when you were talking about the joy and the peace that you felt since you discovered meditation and kundalini, it feels like that should be our natural state. Well, it is. The only reason that humankind is here is to evolve. Once that kundalini is awakened, it hits all the different parts of the brain that are dormant. The divine did not create the human body with that brain that's not used, with 90% of it not used. It's supposed to be used. You tap okay. into all the different creative parts of you. You see things differently. You can hear differently. I mean, it just okay. opens up all the senses in a entirely different way. You're, you're a different being. And okay. that is the natural evolution. And every soul who comes into a human body, you know, mm-hmm. they are here to have that at natural evolution and they forget, you know, they just forget. <laughs> okay. Okay. Once yeah. you're open, it, I mean, do you just, does it just stay that way? You know what I mean? Like, Once the Kundalini or, has risen, not just come up a few times, but it's hit the crown chakra and exploded there. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. it, that's it forever. Yeah. Okay. Who are you now that your Kundalini has risen versus who you were before? Well, I'm just, the veil is off. I'm the same person. <laughs> mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I still love music and people and all that sort of stuff, right. but I'm not, the things that used to interest me that I would find exciting, I don't find exciting anymore. I just think they're oh, really? silly stuff that people do. I just, you know, I, I just, there's so much, it's very, very hard to explain, but there's just, basically you just feel a huge amount of love. Your intuition is very, very clear. You can send light and actually transmit light to people and have them healed and different things happen all through you just being as far as I'm concerned you're just a conduit then for the divine to use you okay. you're not God you're just clear now you're a clear channel mm, okay that makes a lot of sense what are some of the success stories some of the ones that really stand out to you um, of people who worked with you or worked with your music or your programs well, so many. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I know. I bet. 
thousands, <laughs> literally. Uh, and we don't ask people to ever give us testimonials. They just always write. You know, um, one lady who whose little boy was, a, a, you know, um, oh, anyway, very, very slow learner. <laughs> Let's put it that okay. way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who, who has now been said by the medical profession to be normal now. Um, okay. You know, cancer, stuff like that, leaving the body. Wow. Um, some people that were in extreme pain, leaving the body quickly rather than staying in pain. That's also a blessing. Yeah, that is a blessing. And, oh, just so many things. Oh, my goodness. Uh, one lady was in credit card debt, if you want to look, look at the material, uh, $500,000. She'd never seemed to be able to get out of it. She'd have to pay one credit card to another credit card. And mm. after four months, uh, she was completely out of debt. I told her just to trust as I sent a light to her to do what I suggested. And a relative that she didn't even know left her $530,000. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, yeah miracles happen. Oh, so many things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Have miracles become like a normal part of your life now? Well, I don't think they're miracles. I think that the, this world is a dream, and this dream can be changed. Nature can be changed. The okay. body, the circumstances can be changed. Uh, you know, the new groovy thing is people call it the law of attraction, but for thousands of right. years, the gurus and monks mm-hmm. have talked about, you know, this world is a dream. Anything can be changed. You can bless the earth and get rid of toxins. I mean, anything can happen. But there's, okay. there, uh, on this planet, there are 7 billion people at all different levels of evolution. Some mm-hmm. are just like still animals, you know, they still have to be told you can't speed. They still need police, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. when you think of technology and the advancements in technology, it's amazing to think that we basically still need the Ten Commandments for people to know. They've got to be in fear of the police catching them. You know, don't steal, you don't commit murder, you don't drive okay. too fast, you don't drink and drive. You know, the, the world is mm-hmm. still at a low level of, of, of oscillation. Uh, at, at a lot of different levels uh, because they think that they're separate from each other. They don't realize right. that their soul, what's within them, is the same within everyone else. Personalities, <laughs> likes mm-hmm. and dislikes, that's different, sure, but what's within each person is in that same ocean of eternal light that is beyond okay. the universe. Everything is within everyone. Okay. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's very beautiful. Um, Michelle, if people want to know more about what you do, if they want to um, have a you know a clear introduction to your work, where where can they go? Well, if they go to my main website, mysticalsuccessclub.com, dot com, there's a mm-hmm. lot of free videos, and you know people have stated when they've watched them that you know amazing things have happened to them. Um, okay. So there's a lot of free videos with good information as well. And you can just find out a lot of stuff there. But also, we've given your listeners uh, some a lot of free products. If they just mm-hmm. go to myhighvibration.com, okay, you know, as in the words just spelt like they would be, M-Y-H-I-G-H, vibration.com, myhighvibration.com, they will have the seven-day course of all the different videos that I made to help people release negative energy from their life, from their home, from their business, to learn how to raise their energy instead of losing energy because that's okay. where people get stuck because they stay at the same oscillation and they get disappointed. They read all these books on the law of attraction and they still don't get quite where they're at. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and they don't understand. It's about vibration and how to change that. And also okay. uh, another product that we do sell, which we're giving to your listeners for free there as well, is my video on the practice of meditation. Okay. Okay, and also sounds... what you're doing is brave. You've decided to, you know, you're, you're a person who's always been there as a healer, massage, doing all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And now you're mm-hmm. out there wanting to give people a way to be courageous and having all these different women, or I don't know if there's men you're interviewing as well, but different people, different men. souls, uh, mm-hmm. giving them mm-hmm. ideas from different points of view. And that was courageous of you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, when the idea came to me, it's it's like I just couldn't stop, you know. I just had to keep moving forward toward it, and then things just kept opening up, and I'm just grateful that, you know, I could be a vessel for this message. So thank you so much. Those gifts sound amazing. So I will certainly put a link below. Um, If you're listening to this right now, there will be a link on this website where you can access um, Michelle's free gifts. 
and please take advantage of them. They sound like amazing gifts. And um, thank you so much, Michelle. Did you have any last thoughts on courage that you wanted to share? No, just, you know, if people can just be silent, silent their minds occasionally, just remember the divine presence is within me. Say it. The divine presence is within me. The divine presence has gone before me and prepared the way. Even if they do it just while the car's starting. You know, before they even put their feet on the floor in the morning, just, I am one with God. Unify yourself with that divine. It doesn't Mm -hmm. mean you have to believe in God or not. God is a fact. Eternal light is a fact. Holy light is pulsating through everything. (laughs) Just because the veil isn't lifted yet doesn't mean it's not there. So have faith in that. You'll always be looked after. Okay. Okay. I love that. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your insights with everyone. Thank you for being here. Well, God bless you all. God bless you too, sweetheart, greatly. And thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, love.